I'm Eleanor Garth from Longevity Technology, and I'm delighted to be joined by Dr. Stephanie Van Watson of Serafina Therapeutics, the company behind Fatty15. Hello to you, Stephanie. Hi, Eleanor. Wonderful to be here. Thank you for coming. And there's a really great origin story that we're going to get into in a little bit. But I'd like to start a little bit further back, if I may, with dietary guidance. Um, And dietary fats have been demonized for decades. So could you perhaps tell us why the advice that we've been given has been so wrong? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's just as off what often happens, Eleanor, as science progresses, we get smarter, right? And so uh, what we're learning, this is specific to saturated fats, right? So since the late 1970s, we've been told to avoid all or decrease the intake of all saturated fats, of which most of those come from, uh, you know, dairy fat. So that's resulted in us decreasing your intake of cow's milk and the whole dairy fat. What we've learned since then is that not all saturated fats are the same. So, you know, when you think about saturated fats, there's actually two main types. One is called odd chain saturated fats, the other called even chain. And now what numerous studies have shown repeatedly is that these odd chain saturated fats like C15 and C17, that those are uh, constantly associated with better health, lower risk of type two diabetes, heart disease, fatty liver disease, and beneficial activities. While the even chain saturated fats like C16 and C18, which are high in uh, milk and butter, that these even chain saturated fats are, do the opposite. They're associated with a higher risk of type 2 diabetes, heart disease, fatty liver disease. So take home point is that we were partly right, but we kind of threw out the baby with the bathwater. And when we removed all saturated fats, we've learned the consequence of taking C15 specifically out of our diets. Fantastic. So how did you discover C15? I mean, how did this discovery came come about? Because it's, it's quite an interesting story, isn't it? It is, and, and it was an accident. So some of the best discoveries are, the way, are isn't it? <laughs> accidental. So um, yeah, I'm a veterinary epidemiologist, and you know I was working for the CDC World Health Organization, um, Eleanor, and uh, then I was recruited by the Navy to help understand long-term health, especially among aging dolphins at the Navy. So. You know, I was like, what? The Navy has dolphins. So the Navy's cared for a population of about 100 bottlenose dolphins for over 60 years, six zero years. And they live in the open ocean, go out um, in the ocean every day. Every day they choose to come back. It's really an amazing population. So the Navy takes such good care of these dolphins that they live on average longer than dolphins in the wild. So if you look at a wild dolphin. They live to about 20 years old. Dolphins at the Navy live um, 40 and even into their 50s. Wow. So it was really fun um, and wonderful to see that, um, you know, they really, they brought me in to say, gosh, we have these older dolphins, this growing population of geriatric Navy dolphins, and we want to better understand healthy aging and how to protect the health of these dolphins. Um, you know, throughout their entire long lives. And so when we looked at aging dolphins, we found that they age a lot like us. They can get high cholesterol, chronic inflammation, Alzheimer's, even, you know, fatty liver disease, um, which now is, you know, present in one in three uh, adults globally. So what was really important was that not all the dolphins aged the same, and we had healthy agers and not so healthy agers. So we were able to use this technology called metabolomics to look at which small molecules um, present in the dolphin's blood, as well as in their all fish diet, predicted the healthiest aging dolphins. And long story short, you know, we thought it was going to be omega-3s for sure, because all they eat are fish, but um, omega-3s didn't even make the list. And that's where the delight and surprise came from this little odd chain saturated fat called C15 um, predicted the healthiest aging dolphins. Wow. So it really is research with a porpoise. Oh, trademark that. There we go. I love it. <laughs> I was desperate to get that in somewhere. <laughs> so that's, that's amazing. So obviously you've, you've taken this C, C1510 and now you've turned it into a supplement I mean, what, yeah. what makes that, or rather, take it back a step, what makes that molecule so unique, so important? 
Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, it's, you know, Eleanor, it's remarkable because C15 is such a simple molecule, right? It's just 15 carbons strung together, you know, no double bonds. It's just this straight chain. It doesn't bend. It's just 15 carbons. Um, and it's remarkable what nature has evolved or how we have evolved to use C15, not only to protect our health span, but our longevity as well. So the way it does that, the way C15 works, um, once we made that initial discovery in um, dolphins and then the same right, associations of better health and C15 was happening in humans, we moved pure C15 into the lab um, and started working with it. Um, and that's where we discovered that C15 um, does three main things at the cellular level that really support long-term um, healthy aging. So the first is um, that it it's probably most important role is it is a very sturdy, saturated fat, sturdy fatty acid that goes into our cell membranes and you know, each cell is protected by this two layers of lipids, that, which is our cell membrane. And the strength and integrity of our cells, and therefore us, is completely dependent upon how strong our cell membranes are. So C15 plays this incredibly simple and important role of acting like bricks within our cell membranes that help stabilize them. They're highly resistant to oxidative stress, you know, to attack by out external, um, you know, breakdown. And so it literally just makes our cells strong for longer so that they can function. The other two um, important things that C15 does, all of which target these key hallmarks of aging, right? That's so important for longevity is that they um, uh, repair, C15 repairs mitochondrial function. So those cell uh, energy makers within our cells, um, so important to keep that those up and running to generate ATP. And then the other uh, third thing is that C15 activates, um, keeps our cells be able to talk to each other. So it keeps cellular signaling going. Um, this is um, relevant to longevity, both um, activating AMPK and inhibiting mTOR, which are like the holy grail oh of God, yes. longevity. So it does both of it. So in the end, you know, C15 really has this core role um, of protecting our long-term health, which is why at the end of our initial round of studies back in 2020, we published in scientific reports that C15 is not only an active and beneficial fatty acid, it's the first essential fatty acid to be discovered in over 90 years since omega-3. Um, so it really was exciting that the dolphins gifted us with, uh, with that discovery. Yeah, that that's amazing actually, and uh, we've we've covered that on our on our website in some detail. So, if uh, people watching the video want to check back on longevity top, dot technology, you can read more about it. So you you've obviously got this fantastic molecule, and then you're making it into a supplement. Did the does the strength of the molecule lend itself to its bioavailability? It, it's a great question. It is so. It's part of the strength. It's how small it is. Right. And for the supplement, the, one of the reasons why we worked with the Navy, because you know, this is a Navy technology. Uh, I was at the Navy when we uh, when it was discovered um, that um, what's important about this molecule is in its free fatty acid form. So not bound to triglycerides like it is in food. In its free fatty acid form, pure C15 is readily bioavailable. So um, that is a big reason why we developed this supplement is we really wanted to ensure um, that it was highly bioavailable. We had, um, we could, we were able then to make it vegan friendly because our primary um, food source of C15 by far is dairy fat. Um, and we were, oh, again, make it pure and put it in a way that you're only getting the good C15 fat without the even chain, the C16, C18 fats, which are present at much higher levels in foods. So the result is really, you know, the molecule, the pure, C15 molecule that of which all these exciting studies have been done are exactly what's in fatty 15. That's great. So that means that you can have one supplement that, that does what you want. You don't have to sort of faff about with a gluten-free version and a vegan <laughs> version or, a, or this version that's more bioavailable than the last one. You, you've sort of managed to, to, to get it right first time, which must be very satisfying professionally. Oh, it's great. I mean, the work of the work has been done. And, and I'll tell you, Eleanor, it wasn't overnight, right? So it's, you know, we were, because we're scientists and 
public servants first, really the, um, you know, we spent 10 years um, on the science working with, um, you know, leaders in the field of fatty acids in metabolism and diabetes and fatty liver disease um, and in supplement production. So that, again, like you said, we wanted to do it, ensure that we provided the absolute highest quality, most effective and safest um, means to bring C15 back to the world. So at, at, it, we kept going so much with the science, Eleanor, that our um, advisors were like, okay, enough is enough. <laughs> like, like it's this. time to bring it to the world. You can, the science is never going to end, <laughs> but it's time time to jump, kids. So That's fantastic. That we did. So uh, I've, I've just started taking fatty 15. There we go. There's my bottle of it. Nice. So uh, what effects can I expect to see? Right. So, you know, the, the, all of this robust studies with regard to longevity, um, you know, and uh, C15's whole body benefits that we've talked about, we've really focused on its importance in protecting our metabolism, immunity, um, and, and heart and liver health. So um, long term, which means like three to six months, uh, that you would expect to see improvements um, if there's room for improvement uh, in with regard to liver health, metabolic heart and immune health. Um, so that's why we introduced it to the world. Um, you know, more and more data are supporting that nutritional C15 deficiencies are driving the rise in metabolic heart and liver diseases. So that was our you know, world changing idea to bring C15 to the world. The delight and surprise um, when we put once we put um, fatty 15 out on the market and we all started taking it, um, we started seeing that we were seeing benefits within weeks mm -hmm. that we weren't expecting because the dolphins couldn't really tell us. <laughs> and that includes about 50% um, of our customers within uh, two weeks report feeling better. And that includes deeper sleep a calmer mood and less appetite um, between meals. And we've learned that an article, um, a study that we published since then shows that our body uses C15 to make this second molecule, a metabolite called pentadecanoyl carnitine, but we'll just go with PDC, that um, amazingly fully activates um, both cannabinoid receptors. So CB1 and CB2, which you know, help with pain and sleep and mood. So it really helps explain, we have the science behind, you know, these wonderful near-term benefits. Wow, so uh, where are you sort of planning to, to go with this this knowledge that you've acquired about PDC? Is there, is right. there some way you can s spin that into another product or will you just be refining Fatty15 further, you think? Yeah, you're so smart. Um, so uh, we're doing both. So, you know, it's like, okay, because there's only been one other discovered fully acting endocannabinoid, you know, which is how you characterize these. Um, this is a giant finding that supports because again, C15 is an essential fatty acid, which means it's a nutrient that our bodies must have at certain levels to maintain our health. That supports that we probably like, why do we have endo, why do we have cannabinoid receptors in our brain and throughout our body in the first place is probably not for cannabis, right? Because mice and dogs have it and they're, you know, they don't have access to, to those. So it's those receptors are there to help maintain our homeostasis, our mental and cognitive health through what we're eating. So when we took you know, C15 out of our diet, we basically have left those receptors not activated in the way that they should be. So um, that being able to, like you said, Eleanor, to be able to get C15 back into our diet so that our bodies can make PDC to then help not only with our whole body health, but with our mental and cognitive health too. In addition, we're taking a look at the molecule, just PDC itself, um, and have been funded by the Office of Naval Research um, to work with that molecule and see if there may be benefits of being able to, being able to provide that molecule directly. Fantastic. Stay tuned. Wow. So it's got it all going on at Serafina then. And uh, any, anything else in the, in the pipeline for you that our viewers would be excited to know about? 
Gosh, um, you know, we have uh, one clinical trial came out on C15 uh, in November. Uh, that was really exciting. It showed that um, people, it was a really big challenge, right? It was taking women who had fatty liver disease in which they got, um, they were, there were three groups. One was put on a low fat, I'm sorry, a low calorie diet of 1,500 calories. The second had a low calorie diet that followed Mediterranean diet guidelines. And the third had low calorie Mediterranean diet plus C15 supplementation. And they basically, you know, stood back and said, okay, C15, let's see what you can do in the face of the other benefits that clearly you're going to get from uh, eating less and eating a healthier diet. So um, long story short, C15 helped um, above and beyond all the other benefits, um, showed that it lowered LDL cholesterol. It had um, the people who had C15 supplement had the greatest loss in um, um, body fat, and they had a really interesting change in their microbiome of a healthier microbiome, included, including increased growth of a bacterium called Bifidobacterium adolescentis, which interestingly is one of the gut bacteria that have been shown to increase longevity yeah. in multiple species. So that you know, that will be an interesting area, I think, uh, to pursue. And then we have another clinical trial um, coming out that was led by Dr. Jeff Schwimmer at UC San Diego and Rady Children's Hospital, um, focusing on metabolic syndrome, fatty liver disease in adolescents. So stay tuned. Uh, for those results, they uh, should be out this year. So we're excited for that. Wow, that's a fascinating study. And obviously it being focused on women just um, begs the question about the role of C15 in perhaps um, reproductive longevity, the menopause. Has there been any research into that? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. So, you know, with, with regard to reproduction, um, there's been a whole other group series of studies not led by us by different teams that came out last year really started coming out late 2022 and then throughout 2023 and they're showing that from the ovary basically women with diminished ovarian syndrome <clears throat> sorry excuse me have lower c15 um, in their ovaries and it was suggest it's been suggested that low c15 might be driving diminished ovarian syndrome, that then translates to when they looked at the milieu um, around the embryo, that higher C15 in that milieu supported better embryonic division, so higher in vitro fertilization success. And then that translates all the way to moms with more C15 that get more C15 to their children through breast milk the children have um, better body growth, lower risk of type one diabetes and lower risk of allergies. So I think all of this just translates to, again, C15 is an essential fatty acid from all the way from the very beginning of life. You know, we focus, we're focusing on the end, but there's a whole other groups looking at how essential it is from, from the beginning. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's really, on the menopause side, and that was me, like, you know, I went through menopause and, just from a from a personal standpoint, um, you know, menopause results in accelerated aging yeah. um, in women, and all of a sudden you go from like I'm fine to oh my god, I just aged like a hundred years. It is. Um, I think the last time I wrote about it, I described it as a cataclysm. It really, yeah, is it's, a, it, it, that exactly. Yeah. So I went through that, and you know, I. I actually ended up doubling my dose of fatty 15 because we recommend people could take one or two capsules. So um, I, you know, because as I was going through menopause, I was getting all of a sudden joints that never hurt, started hurting. You know, I was fatigued. My hair was starting to thin and fall out. And when I went to the two capsules, Eleanor, like all of those things went away. So it's just, you know, preserving <laughs> slowing down the accelerated aging and, and doing what an essential fatty acid sh for longevity should do. So there's obviously a lot of information about C15. It sounds like a really interesting molecule. Where, where can our readers find out more about it, Stephanie? 
Absolutely. So all the science around C15 and there's new science coming out. It feels like every week or every couple of weeks, we're putting it all at discoverc15.com. And that's where you can find all the peer reviewed science from prestigious team, teams throughout the world. Uh, enjoy it. And it may also help you fall asleep. So give it a try. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. Okay, well, that's fantastic, Stephanie. Thank you so much for your time today. Um, it's been absolutely fascinating. Great. Thanks, Eleanor. It's fun. Thank you.